Bitcoin fees have been averaging around $7 per transaction, and Ethereum's fees have been around $3, but sometimes jump up to $11, depending on how busy the network is. This means it's not yet feasible to buy a cup of coffee or some gum at your local store. But what if there was a cryptocurrency out there that didn't have any fees? A crypto where it was free to send and receive any amount. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that you can easily understand them. In this video, we are going to explain what IOTA is, how they are able to offer fast and free transactions, and then some tokenomics of their native coin, which you may be able to use for price predictions. So first off, IOTA is a cryptocurrency that offers 100% free transactions. Let's go over why it's called IOTA. Some say IOTA stands for Internet of Things Application. Now the Internet of Things is an idea where we have a bunch of different electronics, like our fridge, microwave, our washer, our security security system, even the watches we wear, all the way to your electricity breaker, and stuff like that all connected through the internet. In reality, IOTA was actually named for the ninth letter of the Greek alphabet, which stands for the lowest amount possible. IOTA is a distributed ledger that allows for very small transactions and data to be sent completely free. Let's dig into how it works. First of all, IOTA is not a blockchain, but it is a DAG. If you don't know, DAGs are similar to blockchains, but much faster and can scale better, seeming to be the next evolution of blockchain technology. Now, IOTA is a DAG, which stands for Directed Acyclic Graph. It could get very confusing if I tried to fully explain it here, but let's go over a brief overview of what a DAG is. First, let's go over some terminology. The boxes are known as nodes, and each node is basically a single transaction. The lines connecting the nodes are known as edges or arcs. If we go back to the name, the directed part means that the graph has a direction. The acyclic part means that the graph always continues in one direction and it never has a loop. Each node will try to point to at least two other past nodes, but it can find up to eight to point to. Once that node has two other future nodes pointing to it, it will then be a confirmed transaction. In a blockchain, we have to wait sometimes for 10 or 35 future blocks to have a confirmation. But in a DAG, transactions are confirmed when only two other transactions reference them. One interesting thing to share is that the more people that use IOTA, the faster it will get, because you'll have those two nodes pointing to your transaction faster. Now this is unlike a blockchain, where the more people using it will simply make the fees go up. By the way, IOTA's specific DAG setup is what they call the Tangle. Instead of proof of work or proof of stake, IOTA uses DAG technology to arrive at an agreement on all of the transactions inside their Tangle. Right now, the Tangle can handle up to a thousand transactions per second, which is much more than Bitcoin and Ethereum. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that since there's no miners, there's also no fees. Now you might be wondering, why would I choose to participate in the network if I'm not getting rewarded? Well, that's a good question. When you send a transaction, you are actually the one submitting the transaction to the DAG. You don't submit it to a miner or a validator to include it, you do it yourself. Using private keys and asymmetric encryption, we can reasonably assume that someone else isn't spending your IOTA coins. And because there's no miners or validators, anybody can add transactions to the Tangle, as long as they follow a specific protocol. Now, right now, there is a confusing thing called the coordinator, which makes IOTA pretty centralized, but it secures the DAG and is a rough replacement for miners and validators. In the future, though, IOTA has plans to replace the coordinator and make it much more decentralized. Moving on, one of the best use cases of IOTA is the fact that they have no fees, which should allow for millions of very small transactions every day. For example, imagine if there were no fees when you paid for your $1 coffee, or if you could be paid every every day by your employer based on how many hours you worked that day. Employers could technically do this if there were no fees and the payment method was quick. Next up on our list is smart contracts. So at the moment, there are no smart contracts deployed right on the main IOTA DAG. However, IOTA has plans for layer two blockchains to allow smart contracts, and they're also working on a big bridge between these two layers. At the moment, they only have a testnet, but when they launch smart contracts, these smart contracts will have EVM support, which means anything that works on Ethereum's network should work on IOTA's network. They call this layer two blockchain scaling model 
off tangle, similar to how we usually call other scaling methods off chain. Anyways, layer two of IOTA should include tokens, decentralized applications, and even NFTs, making it pretty comparable in utility to Ethereum. Now here's another good question that I had. If it's free, how do they prevent spam? Right now, IOTA uses a congestion control algorithm that's pretty technical. On their blog post about it, they claim that it is the first non-proof-of-work DAG-based congestion control algorithm ever. It is very complicated and uses words like blacklist, node model, scheduler, and additive increase multiplicative decrease algorithm. I may take the time to explain it fully in another video, but it's very niche, and I'm not sure if everyone wants to understand it. Also, in the future, IOTA will rely more on something called MANA. MANA is a virtual token that you earn by having and holding the native IOTA token. Eventually, whenever they remove the coordinator, IOTA will switch to something that is similar to proof of stake, except you don't have to stake your coins to help validate. Instead, like I said, you earn mana the longer that you delegate your coins, and you can use that mana to get your transactions first in line. Now, if the network isn't congested, you don't really need mana. But if it is, people who have a lot of IOTA and have held it for a while to earn mana will get priority. Something I found unique about the Tangle is that you don't need a full copy of every transaction on the network to add future transactions. For example, on Bitcoin and Ethereum to be a node, which is a fancy term for someone who wants to try to add to the blockchain, you must have a complete and full copy of the network, which is around 350 gigabytes for Bitcoin and around 280 gigabytes for Ethereum. And these sizes will grow every day. To add to the Tangle, you don't need the full network, only a portion of it since you're only adding nodes that point to a few other nodes. As we near the end of this video, let's get into some tokenomics. IOTA has an unusual naming thing where they have Terra IOTA, Giga IOTA, Mega IOTA, and Kilo IOTA, and then all the way down to just an IOTA. IOTA is the coin used on the network, but it's not needed for transactions. This means natural demand of the coin does not arise from the use of the infrastructure, unlike Bitcoin or Ethereum. There are 2.779 billion MIOTA coins, so around 2.779 quadrillion IOTA, equal to almost the max number of Satoshis out there. But all IOTA coins were all sold through an ICO raising around half a million dollars, and there is currently no planned inflation. However, due to the fact that people will naturally forget their wallet keys or even lose them, this makes IOTA very slightly deflationary. By the way, if you check out the IOTA wallet distribution, you'll see that 30 wallets hold more than 50% of all the coins out there. Now, to me, this was a big question, but the team on Discord said this was due to the fact that large exchanges have a lot and they also use the UTXO transaction model. Long story short, this means you can have one private key, but many different wallets, so it's difficult to see who truly holds the most coins. Oh, by the way, if you haven't seen it already, we recently completed a DeFi for Beginners guide that teaches you how to make money using blockchain tools. If you want to check it out for free, head to whiteboardcrypto.com. There's plenty of other cool stuff there on the website, by the way. We are continually improving it. Anyways, thanks for watching our video. We hope that you enjoyed it. We really hope that you've learned something. And most of all, we hope to see you in our next videos.